Hello everyone, welcome back to Foolish Engineer YouTube channel. Imagine a device that can detect a current as small as a single raindrop and as large as a flowing river. Sounds fascinating, right? Well, today we are going to explore the three decade load current sensing circuit that spans an impressive range of 10 microamperes to 10 milliamperes. Stick around because by end of this video, you'll not only understand how it works, but also understand why it's crucial for so many real life applications. One of the key reasons I started this YouTube channel is to bridge the gap between outdated Indian education system and actual skills needed in the industry. I'm excited to share that this video is sponsored by Altium. If you are an electronic student in India, you can get Altium Designer for free under its Altium Student Lab program. It is an advanced electronics hardware design platform. It's a fantastic way to enhance your skill and increase your chances of landing a job in core electronics companies. And with its best feature, Altium 365, you can upload projects to the cloud, manage libraries, collaborate and review with your team. It supports all CAD files, making an electronics design faster and easier. Just use your university email to get started. Plus, you'll receive a student license, a PCB design course and a certificate recognized by top Indian industries. You also get a free access to Power Analyzer by Keysight. I have personally used Altium Designer since the start of my electronics journey and I really recommend it. So don't miss this chance. You can get started with Altium 365 by clicking the link in the description. First off, let's talk about current sensing. Imagine you have a water pipe running from a reservoir and you want to measure how much water is flowing through it. In electronics, measuring the flow of electric current is crucial for monitoring and controlling the circuit, just like measuring the water flow. Current sensing helps us understand how much current is flowing through a particular part of circuit. Now, why exactly is this circuit called 3 decade load current sensing circuit? Well, it refers to the circuit's ability to accurately measure currents over a range spanning three decades of magnitude or decades of current values. So a three decade range means the circuit can handle currents that vary by a factor of thousand. thousand. Now this amplifier is designed to measure the currents ranging from 10 microamperes to 10 milliamperes. The ratio between maximum and minimum values is thousand. This time difference corresponds to three decades on a logarithmic scale. Why is this so impressive? Well, accurately measuring a three decade current range is very challenging because the amplifier must handle both extremely small and relatively large current with the same circuit. This requires careful design to maintain accuracy across the ranges. The circuit uses gain switching to adapt to different current levels, ensuring a few microamps or several milliamps. At low currents like 10 microamperes, even small noise or inaccuracies can overwhelm the circuit. The design compensates for this. Now we need to design a circuit which will measure the current from 10 microamperes to 10 milliamps. This circuit should give output of this current in the range of 0.1 volt to 4.9 volts. For that, we'll provide 5 volt VCC. We'll use the instrumentation amplifier INA326 from Texas Instrument for this circuit application. It is a low noise precision amplifier. Here's the beauty of this setup. It doesn't just measure current, it scales and adapts based on the load's requirement. Let's see how. The circuit uses a shunt resistor a simple yet effective component that converts current into a proportional voltage. Then the op amp takes over amplifying this tiny voltage into something measurable. But here's the twist. 
It handles three ranges of gain using a clever switching network. Think of it like switching between low, medium and high gear in a car to handle different terrains smoothly. The circuit starts with a shunt resistor which drops the voltage according to the current. Then the amplifier amplifies this small voltage drop across R1 to measure level while providing high accuracy and low noise. It is a precision instrumentation amplifier with rail to rail inputs and outputs, making it suitable for low current sensing circuits. The resistor R4 is the part of gain setting network for this instrumentation amplifier. The components R2, R3, C2, C3 and Switch1 are part of the gain switching network. The circuit implements a gain switching technique to handle three different current ranges. For low current, say 10 microampere, the circuit requires very high gain. For medium currents, it needs a moderate gain. For high currents of 10 milliampere, a low gain is sufficient. The switch SW1 toggles between two paths. Path 1 where R2 and C2 are connected and very large resistor R2 provides a high gain and path 2 where R3 and C3 are connected. This path provides a low gain suitable for higher currents. The capacitors C2 and C3 stabilize the gain network and provide filtering to reduce the high frequency noise. And we have output resistors R5 and R6, where R5 provides a series resistance at the output to limit current and improve stability. R6 forms part of the output impedance network, ensuring proper load for the next stage like an ADC. The capacitor C4 filters out high frequency noise from the output signal. Together with R5, it forms a low pass filter. Now let's see how we can calculate the value of this components so that it works according to our expectation. We'll start with a shunt resistor. It converts the current into a proportional voltage. So we can use this formula to calculate the required value of this resistor. Vi max is the maximum output voltage drop across the shunt resistor. And ii max is the maximum current through the load. So the value of the resistor we select will be 25 ohms. This value ensures the circuit produces a readable output voltage drop without wasting too much power. Gain calculation for different current ranges. The circuit must amplify the voltage drop across R1 to fit within a usable range for further processing. Two gain settings are calculated, one for minimum current and another for maximum current. Gain for maximum current will be calculated by this formula. VO max is the maximum output voltage, which is 4.9 volts. I max is 10 milliampers, and R shunt is 25 ohms. So the gain for this maximum current is 19.6. Now gain for minimum current, we can just alter the formula like this, where VO minimum is the minimum output voltage, 100 millivolts, and minimum current through the load will be 10 microamperes. So this value comes as 400. The circuit needs a gain switching network to toggle between these two gains. The circuit uses precision resistors R2, R3 and R4 to implement the required gains. Let's calculate these values. To calculate R2, we will use this formula where we need value of R4. So for this application, we'll assume R4 as 50 kilo ohms. So from this, the value of R2 comes as 10 mega ohms. And for R3, we can use this formula using gain for maximum current. So R3 will be calculated like this. After that, we'll use one microfarad as the output capacitor and R5 as 100 ohms which will create low pass filter. So from this, we can calculate the cutoff frequency of the output filter, which is 1.59 kilohertz. No circuit is perfect without stability and noise reduction. This design includes capacitors to filter unwanted signals and maintain stability. 
For instance, the output filter capacitor C4 is chosen to set the bandwidth at 1.59 kHz. Why? To ensure the circuit responds accurately without overloading on noise. And using these values, we can calculate the value of C2 and C3. This is how we can design a 3 decade current sensing amplifier. Well, let's see the output of this amplifier. This graph clearly shows the relationship between input current and output voltage. Usually this graph is linear. As the current changes, the output voltage changes. But this is different. Here, initially for small current, the amplifier provides the gain of 400, where it becomes easy to sense very small current that is from 0 to around 2.5 mA. It will increase linearly. When the input current is very small, the voltage drop across the shunt register is also minimal. To amplify this small signal and make it measurable, the circuit uses high gain of 400. For example, if the input circuit is 10 microamperes, then the voltage drop across this shunt register will be only 250 microvolts. And with the amplified gain, the amplifier will give value of 0.1 volt to showcase this 10 microampere current. And as the input current increases, the voltage drop across the shunt register becomes significant. If the circuit continues with high gain, the output voltage would saturate, which will exceed the amplifier's output limit. To prevent this, the circuit switches to a lower gain of 19.6. So, for the current from 2.5 mA to 10 mA, this gain is optimum. If the input current is 10 mA, then the voltage drop across this shunt resistor will be 250 mV. And with the gain of 19.6, the amplifier will give value of 4.9 volts to showcase this current. This dynamic adjustment in gain allows the circuit to maintain output voltage within its operational range. Well, where is this device actually used? First, I could think of some industrial control systems where the monitoring current in devices with varying power stages, example sleep mode versus active mode. And second, the medical devices, in which sensing tiny biological currents as well as operational currents in devices like ECG machines. I hope you learned something new from this. Don't forget to check the description for references. If you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more exciting content.